Hello and welcome to this video where we'll go into TyPy charts and we'll use the TyPy TGB.charts API so that we will create native charts in TyPy. And the chart that we'll choose is a line chart. So then we will start with very simply using a CSV file, reading it in using pandas and then doing some simple processing and then we'll create a line chart and we'll display it in TyPy. However, we'll go into some more details about how to make this visualization look good. Because if you're coming from, for example, Plotly world, you're using maybe Plotly Express or Plotly Graph objects, and then you're used to making a lot of customizations within this tool. However, in TyPy, you could use Plotly, Plotly Express or Plotly Graph objects as well and use that in tgb.chart. However, this one will go into the native one, which is based on Plotly.js, so the JavaScript version. So then it's a little bit different in how you want to customize things. So I will customize several things in this chart so that you can learn how to do it and customize to your special needs. So now I'm in the browser, so I've gone into Kaggle and the link is in this description so that you can find this data set as well. So make sure to sign in to Kaggle and then you can download it. So just download it, download the data set as zip. And then I will move on to Visual Studio Code and then you will see how to use this data set and do some visualization. So that will be interesting. So now I'm in Visual Studio Code and the only thing I've done is putting the data into a data folder. So I will create a new terminal now and I will also increase the size a little bit so that it's easier for you to see. So starting with, oh, Copilot, I don't want that. Okay, so starting with creating a virtual environment, so you can use Python's built-in virtual environment if you want. Otherwise, if you want to follow along, I use UV. So this is super good. So install UV using pip install UV so that you have it globally on your Python system. Otherwise, when you have done that, you can do this UV VNV to create a virtual environment. And then I will activate it. So source.ven bin activate so if it's in windows then it's scripts uh, slash activate instead okay i activate this one so this means i will start from scratch so this is fresh now so let's install some things we need so what do i need i do need pandas i do need pypy of course i need DB to do some simple processing and that's it i think yes that is it okay and it's going super fast when you're installing using UV. Okay, so let's now create a, a file, a, a Python script now. So code main.py. So I save this one and you can see it here. So let's <coughs> start with reading in the data. So import and as speed. So I will choose which data do I choose. I will go and go ahead and do this and i will do norway new car sales by let's say by may by model yes okay norway new car sales by model this is one i will use so you can see there's a lot of years there's a lot of there's months that is this one and then there's make and here are the different model makes and here are the different models and quantity, etc. What you can do is that if you're working with CSV files, it's very good with you if, if, with an extension. You call it; it's called Excel Preview and Data Preview Excel Excel Viewer, actually, like this. Yeah, exactly. This one Excel Viewer makes it possible to read the Excel files in a very neat way and CSV files. So what you do is you right click here and open preview and you can see it in nicely formatted file. However, what you should know is that CSV file, then we have a comma here. Okay. So let's read this one in. So we have imported pandas and we also need to have import or from half lib import 
And the reason for this is that we want to make this so that you can run this from wherever. Otherwise, it's ba the path is based on where you are in the terminal right now. So I don't want that. I want this to be gen general. So that's why I use pathlib here. So what we do is that the data directory equals to path. Then the file is where this file is. And then I will find the parent. So dot. But what we can do is that, for example, I'll show you the so print data directory. So if I do like this, I run this one and you can see this is the, or let's see, they have that on the file. Let's see what it's some error here. And on the file, have that on the file, yeah. done the file, exactly. After that, let's see this in doing downgrade to numpy. Let's see numpy as it may crash. Okay, there's something wrong with import pi error. Pi error. A module that has was compiled using numpy one x cannot be run in numpy two point two six as it may crash. To support both one x and two x versions. Of Okay, this is quite interesting. Actually, I found the error, and the error is simply if you do like this UVP list, you could see that before my TyPy was actually 3.0. So it was the older version of TyPy. So what I did was UVP install strict dash dash upgrade TyPy. So what it does is that it reinstalls TyPy to the newer version, which should be 4.03 etc so the strange thing is that it installed the older version what you need to do is just to do trash upgrade and you get the new version of TyPy. so then it is compatible with the numpy 2 otherwise it was just compatible with numpy 1 and then it didn't work when we import when we ran this one Okay, so another thing is that the right down here you have dot then, so it's important that this one is pointing towards your virtual environment. Otherwise, this run button it won't work with the things that you have installed. Okay, this was some basics Python. So if I run this one, you can see this is my path here. So you can see it's line chart slash main dot pi. Perfect. And then dot parent. If I run this again, you can see I go up to line chart. And then I want to go down to data, right? So then slash data, run it again. And you can see now I'm inside of my data directory. Good. So this is what I want. So then I do df equals pd.read and a CSV. And I put in my data directory slash, let's see what this one is called. I copy this guy and then put it in here. So if I run my print df, you can see that there's some error because UTF-8 codec can't decode. Okay, what you do is here, encoding equals to Latin-1, Latin and you rerun this one, and it will work. Perfect. So now you get this data frame here. And when you have this data frame, it's quite simply just let me run it again. We want to do some grouping here. I want to put all the years together and I want to sum all the quantities. So by doing this, we will use some SQL. So we use DuckDB. So import DuckDB. So let's run this one. Actually, I will decrease this one. I'll put this more to the left like this. And let's do DF year equals to duckdb dot query one two three so this is multi-line string and what we do is select year comma sum of quantity as quantity comma let me see I'll format it a little bit nicer from df and then a group by year and then order by year. Order by year. Okay, perfect. Let's see. And then dot df to return the df. So then I'll print the f year. 
now run this one and you can see this is what I get. They get year quantity and you get 2007 to 2017 and you can see this is decreasing a lot and that is because we have 2017 and only January. We don't have more there. So let me just do like this and dot uh, I lock everything except uh, the last one. So then I don't get to 2016 and that is exactly what I do want. Okay. So let me actually decrease this a little bit so that it's easier to see more of the code. Okay, so now I have DFP here. So let's go on to some stuff which you probably want to see if you are in if you look to this video. And sorry for everything else taking some time, but that is the way it is. It takes some time to come into the fun part. So from typepy.gui import GUI import typepy.gui.builder as tgb and note that in this video i will use the python syntax i won't use the markdown syntax because i really like the python syntax but it's possible to do it in markdown syntax as well so what do we do do some python preamble if done the name equals to done the main let's do like this gui and then I want to have page equals the page and basically dot run and my the port is 5000 by default but I will use 8080 as my 5000 usually is locked. So use reloader equals true and make sure if you do this turn off your auto auto save otherwise there will be problems. Dark mode equals to false. I don't want dark mode. Okay so with tgb.page as page okay and then we will do tgb.text markdown i will call this line chart with tgb.chart and then mode equals to markdown and basically let's do one more thing tgb.char not chart table and then I will place in my DF year. So I will explain the syntax a little bit soon, but just run this and see if it works. So I run this one and you can see that it will jump out a browser now. Okay, so this is what it jumps out. Actually, I don't want DF year there. I want my raw data. DF and re and rerun this one and you can see it's updating so as simple as that we have our data frame inside here this is the raw data so just to note that we'll do tgb.txt let's do like this raw data and then mode equals to md markdown okay save this one and rerun this one okay perfect i rerun this with command r you can do this with control r if you're in windows or f5 to rerun this one okay i'll do command b also and let's explain this code <laughs> so simply tgb typepy.gui.builder this is used for the all the layouting in your typepy and the typepy.gui you use this to run this uh, typepy app so for this one gui you place in the page so you put in the page which you get which is a component that you create in using tgb so with tgb.page as page then you create this page variable and inside this page variable, you place in all these uh, small components. So what you do is that you have a text component, you have another text, and you have here a table. And here in the GUI, you, you do the run, you open it up in 8080. So this is localhost 8080. And then you use reloader equals true, means that when I save this one, I can reload the page and it will. I don't need to restart it. And that's why it's important to not have autosave on, because if you have autosave on, then whatever you type, it will save. And then uh, this one will break, basically. So 
you have dark mode equals false if you have it equals true then this one is in dark mode actually quite nice in dark mode however i want to have light by default because i like to do my own styling so if i want to have it on dark mode then i will make it into dark that is it and here another very important thing is that first we make the mode into markdown if we don't have it into markdown I save this one you can see I rerun this one and you can see this is the raw text so markdown using hashtag is the first title so this is equivalent to h1 in html so the first title and two is a subtitle etc and now to some very important stuffs this is dynamically binding the df variable here so here you have the df variable you bind it to the graphical user interface so bind this variable and when bind it it means that this exists in a variable called state which we'll come back to in a later video however right now you just need to know that you bind this one to a variable that exists in your backend or exists in your python code and when you have bound it the data from there will show in this table basically so that is it simply okay what else can we do let's create some chart we have table there we have text for raw text okay so tgb.text tag hashtag line chart let's see mode equals to markdown save this one and you can see here is the text and let's see tgb.chart and what you can see it it needs some data and the data i will put in is basically df year right so i put it in as a dynamical variable so i bind this to df year and then we choose the x as year and we choose y as let's say quantity actually it has to be spelled exactly here so that the uh, case sensitive case sensitive here okay and rerun this one and you can see ah this is my chart perfect so as simple as that we have a line chart and we have a data frame here a table so this line chart this is the basic line chart in TyPy. so i will actually break this into two videos so in this video we have come so far that we have created this chart and in the next video we will actually go into styling it and making the layout a little bit better so as you have seen in this video we have created a line chart putting in some data read the data we have done some basic setup we've gone into some error actually with typepy installing 3.0 so that it didn't work with numpy so that what we needed to do is to upgrade it and we did it in our uv virtual environment and in the next video we will go more into styling our chart now we have just a basic chart which looks quite nice and as you saw in the code, it's very simple to create this chart, but we do want to style it and make it more customized into what we want. And what I want is following the principle of data storytelling. So that you will be seeing in the next video. And also we'll do some more basic layout in the next video. So see you there. Bye.